Good day, Spuddies. Hello, Spuddies. We're here at the Spud Temper dinner. I'm up close so you can hear me. Um, it's the Lulus. That's Mandy and Cindy and Mark. And they're playing some music for us, entertaining us for dinner. I'll get out of the way. So, uh, 
yeah, I, I, I had that realization that I was a food addict. And I thought to myself, why do we, why do we push this moderation thing? Why is that something that everyone wants to talk about? That it's always just moderation. Any other addiction, if you're a gambling addict, if you're an alcoholic, if you're a drug addict, whatever your addiction, it's widely accepted that the best thing you can do is quit entirely. But we don't talk about that with food addiction. I wondered why. So uh, I got to researching and I, and I had the idea that maybe if I could, maybe there is a way to quit food. Maybe I could quit everything. Obviously, you can't quit food entirely. You'll die if you don't eat. But I wondered if I could quit everything except one food. So therefore, get as close as I possibly could to quitting food. And so the research started. So I did a lot of research over the course of a month or six weeks. And uh, I, I watched a lot of lectures from uh, nutrition scientists online. And I, I read some, uh, uh, quite a bit of uh, nutrition science as well uh, through journals and um, published literature. I read books and uh, I watched documentaries and you know, I spent quite a lot of time on this. And, well, one of the very, probably the very first thing I saw was a video by Dr. John McDougall on YouTube called "Potatoes: The Perfect Food," and uh, and it was about a four-minute video and it packed a lot of information into it, and uh, and that got me uh, travelling down the potato path. And over all the research I did, I found that the, the combination of scientific evidence as well as historical evidence uh, pointed to potatoes being the right choice for this uh, experiment. So there are, there are things like uh, the Irish diet before the potato famine was not all but mostly potatoes. Uh, there, are, there are examples like that throughout history. The Dutch had a similar diet. There are, there are examples of uh, prisoners being kept on a diet of only potatoes and, and thriving. Uh, and there are, there are, to this day, there are uh, highlanders in Papua New Guinea that live on a diet of mostly sweet potatoes. Uh, the, the Okinawans in Japan have the, the highest uh, rate of centenarians uh, in the world and their diet is made up of, well, their traditional diet, these days has changed, but their traditional diet is made up of uh, close to 90% of uh, purple sweet potatoes. So, uh, combined with the scientific evidence and the historical evidence, uh, I thought potatoes were the best choice. So, uh, so I decided to do the Spud Fit Challenge, as I call it. Uh, the decision was made to do it about about three days, I think it was, before New Year's Eve. So anyone who's an experienced dieter like me knows that you don't start until Monday. So, so uh, yeah, it was a little bit of a different example. I thought, well, it's uh, New Year's Eve's coming up. I'll start January 1st and uh, no need to rush into things. <laughs> so, uh, so I waited and over, that, over those three days, uh, the idea came from somewhere, I don't know where, that maybe I should do the whole year. Since I'm starting January 1st, why not just keep going through the whole year? Uh, the original idea was to do a month or two, as most of you guys have done a month. That, yeah, that was probably what I thought I was going to do, but then from somewhere this idea of doing the whole year came to me, and uh, for some weird reason I decided to do it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, here we are. The first, uh, first couple of weeks were hard, and uh, I thought I'd share with you some things that I've learned about uh, how to deal with cravings and uh, how to how to survive in a food prison. Uh, so, the, yeah, the first couple of weeks were hard. It was uh, it was it was a struggle to get through uh, eating only potatoes, and uh, I I was sort of at the point though where that was a, a really really important thing to do. I was I had tried everything else. And, uh, and to me, this was a last roll of dice. It was if, I, if this doesn't work, then I don't know what's going to work because uh, yeah, things were things were like I said. I had a bleak outlook on life, and it felt like my last chance. So it made things really important to me. So I, I no matter what happened, I I was really really determined to um, to make it work because uh, I didn't really know how or why. But uh, I was just sure that if I could get through the year on potatoes, then life would be different somehow. And uh, yeah, so far, <laughs> it's, a, it's a totally different life. <clears throat> so uh, a, a couple of little tips. So uh, the first and most important one that I had was uh, that I, I decided to play a little mental trick on myself. And that was that uh, when I had a craving for food, if I looked in the cupboard over there and saw those delicious looking cakes, 
I, I would go, I would just play a little mental trick on myself and say, yeah, no worries, we can have the cakes. We can eat the whole, whole lot of them if we want. But the first thing we're going to do is load up on potatoes. I'm going to have a big bowl of sweet, pota uh, sweet potatoes or, or white potatoes. I'm going to fill up on them. And then uh, once I've done that, then I can eat the cake. It's all right. And uh, so I did that a lot of times. And every single time without fail, I'd get to my, the end of my huge plate of potatoes and I didn't want anything else. And uh, I remember many times sitting in the car park of a very uh, name of fast food restaurant, but maybe not many, three or four times I sat in the car park with a box of potatoes thinking I can't wait to finish this box of potatoes so I can go into the restaurant and get some junk. And uh, it never happened. I finished the potatoes and, and, uh, and I didn't want the junk anymore. So. Uh, that was a yeah. That was a revelation to me because the, the way I describe the uh, the cravings happening is that we get a little devil sitting on one shoulder and an angel on the other, and they're both yapping in your ear trying to get you to uh, trying to get you to do their thing. You've got a little devil on your shoulder and he's he's seeking a cheap high. He's he's the addict and he just wants to get high and, he, and you're his dealer. So. The, the way to avoid that is to narrow the rules down and make it a very simple game. So if, you, if you've got a lot of different foods that you can eat as a whole food plant-based diet, I think that's the best diet. But for me, I tried that over the years and, and uh, I decided that there was too much, too, there was too much range in that. If you're an alcoholic and you're quitting, it's can I drink the beer? No, that's alcohol, simple argument. The devil's got nowhere to stand and, and it's over. So. Uh, narrowing the rules of the diet for me was a big thing. Uh, another little, a little tip, who's seen The Matrix, the movie The Matrix? Yeah? So my favourite scene from that movie is near the start where, uh, where Neo gets in the car with Trinity and, uh, and, the, and the rest of the Matrix people and they're driving down the road and, uh, and it's, a, it's pouring with rain and, uh, and and someone turns around in the front seat, points a gun at him, and they get out this machine, and they want to do weird things to him. And he goes, "I've had enough of this. Stop the car." He opens the door and looks down a, a, a long, dark alley. It's raining, and Trinity grabs his hand and says, "No, trust me." And he turns around and says, "Why?" And she says, "Because you've been down that road. You know where it leads, and I know that's not where you want to be." And, uh, and to me, that was a real. Uh, a scene that I replayed in my mind a lot of times when I had a craving for a pizza or a can of coke or whatever it was, I would repeat that scene to myself and say, you've been down that road, you know where it leads. You know that if you eat the chocolate cake today, it's going to make you think about it for days on end until you have another piece of chocolate cake. It's, you know exactly what's going to happen. Don't trick yourself into, into thinking that you can do things just this once. Experience over the last 10 or 15 years or more has told me that that's not going to happen, so let's not give into these tricks, these mind tricks that the devil is trying to play. Let's, uh, let's just learn from experience and make a decision about logic and, and realise that if you, if you make that choice this once, chances are you're going to make it again and again and again. And, uh, and it's, it's, it's not where you want to be. You know what that's like. And like I said, I was coming from a dark place and I didn't want to go back there. So. Uh, yeah, that made, that made the choice easy. How long have we been going for? Well, it's probably long enough now. Uh, I'll, go well. Go. <laughs> All right. well, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll finish up. Uh, so over the, over the course of the year, uh, I've, I've learned a lot about myself and, uh, and like I said, I talked about my depression and, and that's, I don't want to say I've beaten depression because I think you're on dangerous ground when you start talking like that, but my, my, I can't remember the last time I had a bad day. So uh, I expect that at some point in time I'll have bad days like I did when I had depression. They were most days, but uh, yeah, I don't, like I said, I don't want to say I've beaten it, but it's, uh, it's as close to gone as it can be. Uh, my sleep has improved uh, amazingly. That was within the first couple of weeks. My sleep improved, my blood pressure's improved, my uh, blood sugar levels improved, my cholesterol's improved. I've had uh, joint aches and pains from old football injuries that uh, I retired from football 10 years ago and, and I still had aches and pains from injuries at the start of this year and they're all gone. Uh, I, I'm, fitter, I'm as fit as 
not quite as fit as I was when I was an elite kayaker, but I'm getting close to that. At the start of the year, I couldn't run up a flight of stairs, and two days ago, I ran up Mount Wellington, uh, just next door to Hobart, if anyone's been there. It's, a, it's not the biggest mountain, it's not Mount Everest, but I did, I did go through 1,200 metres of elevation change. So, um, and it was, uh, and I ran all the way, there was no walking involved, I ran it, and uh, to think nine months ago that, uh, that I would be running up a mountain is insane. So, uh, yeah, things are, things are different, and, uh, and most of all, my, my relationship with food is totally different. It's, these days I see food as fuel, it's, uh, it's something I need to, need to put in my body to power me through the day, and it's, uh, you know, if you, if you want to run a Ferrari, you've got to put premium fuel in it. And I'm trying to, I'm giving myself my body as a Ferrari these days, and I want to give it pre premium fuel. Uh, I'm not eating to try to get enjoyment or comfort or emotional support. I'm eating to put premium fuel in my body so that I can get the most out of life. And, uh, and that's a, that is a, a different way of looking at food than I've ever had before. So uh, I think I'll we'll probably, Got to be out of here in a, in a little while. We've got a little bit of time yet, but I might stop my talk there and take questions from uh, whoever's got them. Yes, dearest mother-in-law. <laughs> How are you feeling about January 1st? Are you looking forward to introducing new food? Are you reticent about it? Or are you looking uh, into something really good or start of something yeah. new? Or? Yeah, good question. That was about how I'm feeling about uh, coming to January 1st. and. Uh, Really, the truth is that there's not a lot of emotion around it at all. It's just, uh, oh, there's no food that I'm excited about eating. I'm not, it's not like I'm thinking, oh, like, yay, I get to eat mango or whatever. It's, it's, uh, I'm just, I don't really know why I would stop, to be honest. It's, oh, I'm doing, I'm doing uh, really well. And I guess the main thing uh, I'm looking forward to is probably uh, going out for dinner and not having to call ahead and, uh, and organise to have some potatoes cooked for me. I'd like to just turn up somewhere and eat some as close as possible to whole food, plant-based food. Like, like Jenny was saying in her talk, sometimes you're gonna get a little bit of oil in, even though you ask for it to not be there, but I think uh, I'll be okay with that. But uh, it'll just be, that's the thing I'm looking forward to most of all, but I really think uh, I'll be still eating a, a, a very high amount of potatoes and I'll ease into, as Jenny described, I'll ease into other things I'll probably eat some broccoli. First of all, if you had asked me that a year ago, I would have said, no, I'm not interested in broccoli, but broccoli is a, a good fuel to run a, run a Ferrari on, so let's get some broccoli. That's, that's what I'll be going for, first of all, and um, yeah, who knows? I haven't really thought too much about exactly what I'm going to eat, other than it'll be whole food, plant-based, and still lots of potatoes. Yeah, uh, so I, I, I did exercise a fair bit a few years ago, but uh, we've got a three-year-old boy, and basically since he was born, I have not done anything. Uh, so I was pretty sedentary uh, for the last couple of years until this year started. Uh, when the year started, I wasn't exercising at all, and through pretty much all of January, I didn't do any exercise, and I still lost 10 kilos, which is, um, which is why I think uh, for weight loss, what you eat is far more important than exercise you do. Um, so I lost 10 kilos without doing a, a single bit of exercise in January. Uh, and then at the beginning of February, I, my energy levels were really starting to go up and I was starting to, you know, I was jiggling my leg when I was sitting still and I wasn't sitting on the couch so much. I would be, I would, I would be walking around the house a bit more or had a bit more energy to play with my boy. and. Uh, and things like that were happening, and then that was when I always loved exercise. I just didn't feel like doing it. The depression was probably part of that, as well as just not having energy. And uh, yeah, so in January I started. Uh, oh, sorry, in February I started exercising again, and probably started with half an hour or an hour on my uh, scooter thing that you might have seen if you've watched any of my YouTube videos. Uh, but it's basically like a bike, except you, you push it like that, and. Uh, it's good fun. So that started in, in February and I've basically built it up over time and at this point uh, most days I try to go for a two hour ride on the, on the scooter and, uh, and I'm starting to get back into kayaking again and I do the odd, odd run as well. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm pretty physically active now, I'm pretty fit and, uh, and my heart rate's, my resting heart rate's pretty low now and yeah, I'm starting to become an athlete again. So. 
I can't remember exactly. Maybe, do you remember, Malcolm? I do remember that your LDL adds that down to 1.1. Okay. Because I made it with 1.3. Yeah. So. I'm trying to put my heart disease patients to 1.8. Oh, there you go. So, my, my uh, cholesterol, if you couldn't hear that answer, was it got down as low as 1.1, and now it's around 1.3. And, uh, and Dr. Malcolm likes his cholesterol patients to be below 1.8. I've got a feeling, like something in my memory tells me it was two point, like high two point something, like maybe close to three. So not super high, but still higher than it should be. Um, probably not like imminent risk of a heart attack, but you know, getting getting in place. So yeah, things have improved a long way. Yep. Yeah, your weight loss over time, I'm guessing early on you were dropping. Okay, so yeah, January 10 kilos, February 10 kilos, and then it, it slowly sort of leveled out. Uh, so in the last, so what is it? I think at the end of June, I had lost 42 kilos or something like that. Uh, and then through July and August, I lost one kilo per month. And then so far, well, I haven't weighed myself for a, a week and a half or something now, but. Uh, at that point, I had lost five kilos during September. So it's interesting how it, it levels out and goes again. And I expect it will level out again for a period of time and then go again. Yeah, it's, like I said, uh, the, the point of the exercise is not about weight loss. I'm really happy that I've lost so much weight. But the point of this uh, experiment was to change the way I thought about food. I thought if I could, if I could flick some sort of switch in my mind to make uh, make me think about food as fuel and like I described then that would be the key to long term weight loss for me and, uh, and I think that, I still think that but yes I'm very happy about the weight loss too so yeah but I do I think it's going to be slow from now on yeah anyone else? I'm not sure 100% about what foods actually cause depression, but what I can tell you is that the lovely Kathy Ashton here has informed me about uh, potatoes, uh, well not just potatoes, but about a whole food plant-based diet, including potatoes, is that uh, they stimulate serotonin production in the gut, and you can correct me if I get something wrong here, but when we treat uh, depression using drugs, we try to uh, treat the part of the brain that produces serotonin, we're, but that part of the body only produces 5% of our serotonin production, whereas the gut produces 95% of our serotonin production. So uh, by, by improving my gut bacteria through eating potatoes, uh, my, like, likely what has happened is that my serotonin production from my gut has improved and that has helped my depression. Did I get that close enough to write? By the way, Kathy Ashton here is from Flourish Nutritional Medicine and it's been a big help to me as well this year and we'll, I'm sure, I'd like to answer questions from anyone after as well. <laughs> uh, any other questions? Oh, how are you going for dinner? I mean, when you're on the first? Oh, on the first, we'll go somewhere for dinner. Maybe we'll do another thing like this, I don't know. But uh, yeah, man is excited about going out for dinner with me. All right, if there's no other questions, I'll just show you this. On the way here, I picked up these. So I've got a few of them in the box here. Uh, if you're in the Spud Timber group, then you've got the, uh, the uh, e-book version of that. But you've got the first edition of it, but this is a, a little bit updated with uh, a few minor improvements and tweaks. And uh, yeah, if you'd like one, then you can get one before you go, and they're $20. I even bought this thing this afternoon, which means I can take credit cards. <laughs> and you'll so, sign them. I will sign them. Yeah. <laughs> so um, that's the end of my sales pitch. If, you, if you'd like one, come and talk to me. And Well, come and talk to me anyway. You don't have to buy a book. <laughs> uh, thanks very much for coming. It's, uh, I've had an amazing night. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm over the moon. And uh, 
Thanks again to Malcolm and Jenny for the great speech, and thanks to the Lulus for the great music. And, uh, thanks everyone, spot up. Spot up. Spot up.